Hello and welcome to another Baggies Bears Wines and Spirits review. Today I'm going to review, only because it got to just half past last week and a mate of mine from work picked it up, uh, Brooklyn Lager. American Lager, brewed in the UK these days. I know it actually says it's brewed in New York. Yeah, we'll believe that one, you know. But anyway, 5.2%. Um, don't know much about it. The writing on the back is ridiculously um, small, you know. So, we'll go to beeradvocate.com. It's actually got on beer, beer, uh, ratebeer.com, it's got a 3.4 out of 5, which for a lager, it's actually not a bad um, score. So on beeradvocate.com, it's got 3.72 out of 5 from 3,768 ratings. Wow, that's exceptional. Especially for a lager. Especially when you can, when you think something like Budweiser is only getting something daft like 2.2 um, or less even. You know, so very impressive. Can't remember ever drinking it. Not even in my Sainsbury's days did they ever drink it. So really looking forward to this one. Right, let's crack it open. Let's give it a pull. Don't think this is a glass with widgets in because it's a Corvassier glass. Bit of a posh glass to drink a lager in, but hey -oh. So, as you can see straight away, plenty of carbonation, good white head. There's a sweetness in the, um, in the smell. Had a couple of days off reviews. Um, I was out boozing on Saturday and uh, I was too tired on Sunday. So, uh, in, late nine, in the late 1800s, Brooklyn was one of the largest brewing centres in the country, home to more than 45 breweries. Lager beer in the Vienna style was one of the local favourites. Brooklyn Lager is amber gold in colour and displays a firm malt centre supported by a refreshing bitterness and floral hop aroma. I thought it was floral, I could smell yeah, and taste. Caramel malts, malt showing the finish. The aromatic qualities of the beer enhanced by the dry hopping. Centuries old practice of steeping the beer with fresh hops as it undergoes a long cold maturation. The result is a wonderful flavour, flavourful beer. Smooth, refreshing and very versatile with food. Dry hopping is largely a British technique which we've used in, in a Viennese style beer to create an American original. So, three point nine out of five this one now i will start with an omission i am not the biggest fan of lagers that being said i really enjoyed this one look is a nice amber with a thick foamy head that gives way to a nice collar lacing is nice smell is nice and malty i am getting predominantly bready with traces of sweet caramel there is a res resiny hop that is barely there taste is sweet malts that give way to bitter hops the hops fade quickly but man, those malts are nice. Mm. Feel is light with active carbonation. The finish is bitter and sweet. I know, but true. A really nice feel. Like I said, damn, I like this one. And I don't really care for most lagers. I could drink this regular, like. Not sure on that bloke's English, but hey-ho. Someone's give it a, three out of, a five out of five here. Looking for a decent review. So looks. Someone's put look. Pale chestnut. Gentle rising carbonation into the medium tan head. Slowly reduces to lacing. Yeah, it has reduced. The beer is crystal clear. Uh, smell, nice, quite complex for a lager. Some brief, deeper conifer slash fruits, but a fresh, with a fresh nose. Taste, quite dry, pale ale-ish, but into yet hoppier dry end. This is a brief, flavoursome middle, but I can't put my finger on the fleeting flavour notes there. Uh, and he's put down distinctively dry and hoppy, especially for a lager. In a blind tasting, I would have put money on this being a pale ale, albeit not a sledgehammer example, perhaps a summer pale ale. Overall, I've drunk this several times on and off over the years, and this is the first time I've sat down and thought about it by the prism of rating it, 
very nice. Checking now and seeing it's 5.2% makes sense as it feels that way. Strikingly hoppier, drier than your typical lager. Would happily enjoy again. So yeah, you know, this uh, for two different beer sites to review it high and with thousands of reviews, it's got to be decent. Still carbonating now, Lace, and you know, depending on which way you want to look at it. Don't think this has got anything on the bottom of it, so it's doing well. Still retaining that off-white head. So yeah, you really can taste that floral now. It goes from a sweet to a not so sweet, but it's nice, you know, it's, it is a very pleasant lager. Ooh. <clears throat> and the problem is, um, <clears throat> people go for what's popular. Um, Iceland, uh, Sainsbury's got this in about eight years ago. I'm not sure if they still sell it. Uh, Iceland obviously had it in. They've come to the end of their, uh, they've, they've, they're having a range review. So they've dropped them off price, reduced to clear. But the problem is, that this is, is a, in a different area than your likes of um, Foster's, Carl, Carling, Carlsberg, even Stella and that. You know, it's in a different zone altogether to them. But a very nice um, lager. So it's refreshing without being gassy. Because you're fine with some bit um, lager, especially that like, that's the Stella, really chuffing gassy. You know, you drink it and you're basically burping, aren't you? You know, to get rid of them gases. But this, you, you, I agree with what somebody says. You know, if you didn't know better, you'd swear this was a Brit, a beer. You know, a pale ale, Indian pale ale, or something like that. It just redefines the lagers, really. So it's what's classed as a craft lager, more, rather than just a basic lager, you know. Um, I would put this in the same category, or if not higher, than the likes of Peroni. It is equally as good as your Peronis and your Biramorettis of this world. Top class beer. And obviously, you know, you struggle to get this in a case, so you are going to pay by the bottle. Um, and when it's full price, it's about 180 a bottle. So, you know... It's pricey if you're going to put it up against Peroni, but for quality, that is absolute quality. The taste is gorgeous. Um, I don't need to describe, but, but you know, there's the flavour there, but there's a lovely sweetness, lovely bitterness. It's really damn nice. Yeah, cheers, Andy. Thanks for getting it, me, if you're watching. Uh, <laughs> Oh, so on the lager scale, because I'm not, I, I can't put lager, you can't review lagers in the same way you review beers, because I don't think a lager would ever be anywhere near as good as a proper real ale. So with that in mind, I'm going to give this a 4.5 out of 5. I think it is an absolute wow, you know, quality lager. Really nice. Oh. Boy, I really enjoyed that. See you soon. Cheers.